Welcome back to the IGCSE Computer Science Code 0478 Guide. In this chapter, we will be discussing about computer memory and data storage. In this chapter, you will learn about file formats such as .mp3, .mp4, .jpeg, and .mid, lossless and lossy file compression, primary memory, which is RAM and ROM, secondary memory, which is HDD and SD, SSD, and offline memory, which is CD, DVD, DVD RAM, Blu-ray, and USB flash disks, and also removable HDDs. MIDI, or Musical Instrument Digital Interface, is a communications protocol that allows electronic musical instruments to interact with each, with each other. The file extension for MIDI devices is .mid. A MIDI file consists of commands that instruct the device to produce a particular sound or musical note. Examples of commands include key pressure and the and note on and off. MIDI uses the following bytes. 1. Pitch byte. This tells the MIDI device on which type of note it should play. 2. Velocity byte. It tells the MIDI device how loud the note should be played. And 3. The first byte. It informs the MIDI device on which function it should first perform. To play back to a, to a different instrument, a sequencer software is used since MIDI files won't be recognized in their raw form. The diagram on the right shows a sequencer software. MPEG3 or MP3. It is a file compression method used for music and audio files. MP3 technology can reduce the size of a music file by around 90%. So, a 10 MB file can be compressed into 1 MB file, which is a large reduction in the file size. MP3 technology uses perceptual music shaping, which removes sound that cannot be heard by the human ear. This enables unnecessary sounds to be eliminated, reducing the final file size. MP3 technology is a lossy file compression method, since unnecessary bits are permanently eliminated and cannot be brought back once it is compressed. Note, lossless compression is the opposite of lossy compression. In lossless file compression, all data from the original file are reconstructed when the file is opened. This is used where any loss of data would be harmful, such as a spreadsheet file. MPEG4 or MP4 uses similar technology as MP3. However, this format allows the storage of multimedia files such as videos, photos, animations, and sounds. Videos streamed on the internet are usually in MP4 format. JPEG or Joint Photographic Experts Group. It is a file compression method used to reduce photographic file sizes. JPEG is a lossy file compression method since it removes unnecessary bits that cannot be seen by the human eye. The human eye can only see about 10 million colors while computer imaging software can produce over 40 million different colors. JPEG removes such colors which cannot be seen by humans without any real loss of quality. JPEG reduces the raw bitmap image by a factor of 5 to 15, depending on the quality of the original image. A raw bitmap can be referred to as a TIFF or BMP image with the file extension .tif or .bmp. Images in these formats have the highest image quality since they are not in compressed format. The file size of the image is determined by the number of pixels. It is important to remember that one pixel is equal to three bytes. Since one pixel is made up of three out of the three main colors, which are red, green, and blue. In the exam, you might be asked to determine the size of a file with a given number of pixels. Types of primary storage. Random access memory, or RAM. It is a volatile or temporary memory, so its contents are lost when the computer is turned off. It stores data 
files, and parts of the operating system currently in use. It can be read and write, and its contents can be altered. The larger the size of the RAM, the faster the computer will operate. In fact, the RAM never runs out of memory. It continues to operate at a slower rate. As the RAM becomes full, or nearly full, the processor has to fetch new data from the hard disk to override the old data in the RAM. By increasing the RAM size, the number of such operations is reduced, making the computer run much faster. Types of RAM Dynamic RAM or DRAM It is made up of millions of transistors and capacitors. Each capacitor holds bits of information as ones and zeros while each transistor acts as a switch to manipulate the capacitor's value. This type of RAM needs to be constantly refreshed about every 15 microseconds, otherwise the capacitor will lose its value. DRAM is much cheaper than RAM. It has a higher storage capacity and uses less power. Static RAM or SRAM. It is made up of flip-flops, a combination of logic gates. It has faster data access than DRAM and does not have to be constantly refreshed. They are used when data access speed is absolutely necessary. The top right diagram depicts a DRAM while the bottom right diagram depicts an SRAM. Read-only memory or ROM. It is a non-volatile or per permanent memory. Its contents remain even when the computer is turned off. It stores the basic startup instructions of the computer, such as the basic input-output system or BIOS. The contents of a ROM chip can only be read and it cannot be written from. The diagram on the right shows the difference between a RAM and a ROM. Applications of RAM and ROM in an RC car. ROM. It stores the factory settings, stores the startup routines when the toy is first switched on, and it stores the set routines. RAM. It stores the current data received from the remote control, and it stores the user's own routines and instructions. Moving on to the types of secondary storage. HDD or hard disk drive. It is the most common method used to store data in a computer. Data is stored on magnetic surfaces of disks, known as platters. Each HDD will have multiple platters which spin around 7,000 times a second. There's an electromagnet on the read and write head, which is used to write data on the disk's surface as ones and zeros. Each platter will have two surfaces which can be used to store data. Data is stored on surfaces in sectors and tracks. A sector on a given track will consist of a fixed number of bytes. The main problem with HDDs is latency, which is defined as the amount of time it takes for data to rotate around the read and write head in order to be accessed. Errors such as please wait or loading will be present. In a worst case scenario, you might even get an error such as this one. Nah, I'm joking. This would only happen if you get a virus or something. 2. SSD or Solid State Drive It is a type of secondary memory with no moving parts, meaning that all data is, re is retrieved at the same rate. They do not rely on magnetic properties and instead stores data by controlling the movement of electrons within NAND chips. Data is stored as ones and zeros in millions of tiny transistors within the chip, producing a non-volatile, rewritable memory. We can see a diagram of an SSD to the right. Some SSDs use electronically erasable, programmable, read-only memory, or EEPROM technology, or EEPROM, I don't know, which uses NOR chips rather than NAND chips. These are extremely fast in operation, but are very expensive. EEP-ROM also allows data to be read and erased in single bytes at a time, while NAND only allows blocks of data to be read and erased. SSDs that use NAND chips are distinguished by the term flash, 
while SSDs that use NOR chips are distinguished by the term EEP ROM. The main drawback of SSD is its longevity. Most SSD devices are rated at 20 GB write operations per day over a 3 year period. This is known as SSD endurance. Advantages of SSDs over HDDs It is more reliable since it has no moving parts. They are lighter and thinner which makes them suitable for laptops. They do not have to get up to speed to work properly. They run much cooler than HDDs making them suitable for laptops. Data access is faster than HDD. Number 6. It does not suffer the problem of latency since data is retrieved at the same rate. Advantages of HDDs over SSDs. They are cheaper and they usually have a higher storage capacity. Moving on to offline storage devices. CD, compact discs, and DVD, digital video discs. They are described as optical storage devices since laser light is used to read and write data on the surface of the discs. Both use a single spiral track that runs from the center to the edge of the disc. You can see this in the diagram on the right. Data is stored in pits and bumps on the spiral track. CDs and DVDs can be designated as R, write once only, or RW, read plus write many times. The difference between CD and DVD is the use of dual layering technology in DVDs. This means that a thin reflector is sandwiched between two recording layers. This means that more data can be stored in DVDs. In fact, a single layer DVD will still have a large, larger storage capacity than CDs. This is because DVDs use lasers with a wavelength of 650 nanometers, while CDs use lasers with a wavelength of 780 nanometers. The shorter the wavelength, the higher the storage capacity. DVD RAM. They have the following features. It uses a number of concentric disks instead of a single spiral track. On the diagram on the right, we can see that a concentric disk is much different than a spiral track, which is used in CDs and DVDs. They have good longevity, about 30 years, and allow many read and write operations up to 100,000 times. The use of concentric disks allows simultaneous read and write operations to occur at the same time. Blu-ray disks. They have the following features and advantages. They use a blue laser write, then a red laser to carry out read and write operations. The blue laser lights have a wavelength of 405 nanometers. The use of blue laser light means that the pits and bumps can be smaller. Blu-ray discs can store about five times more data than normal DVDs. Blu-ray discs uses a single 1.1 millimeter polycarbonate disc rather than the two 0.6 millimeter thick discs used in DVDs. The use of two sandwich layers may cause perfringence where errors are caused due to the refraction of light between two separate beams. Since Blu-ray discs make use of one layer, it does not suffer from biofringence. In the table below, we can see the diff discs of CD, DVD, and Blu-ray discs. USB flash memories or memory sticks. They are solid-state devices which use NAND chips to store data. They are connected to a computer via the USB port. Since they are very small and lightweight, they are suitable for transferring files between computers and can be used as small backup devices. Complex software often use memory sticks as a dongle which may contain additional files needed to run the software properly. Digital cameras use a different form of solid-state memory, known as XD or Extreme Digital, and SD, also known as Secure Digital Cards. 
These allow photos to be transferred between cameras and computers via the USB port. Memory sticks have to be treated with care. If they are removed before the it is now safe to remove your device message, data on the stick may be corrupted and may even be totally unusable. Removable hard disk drives. They are basically HDDs which can be connected via the USB port. They are mostly used as a backup device. So by the end of this video, you should know various file compression methods, primary memory devices, secondary memory devices, and offline memory devices. Here, we can see a summary of the different storage devices previously discussed. I hope that this video has been helpful to you, and I'll see you guys for chapter seven, which will be high and low level programming languages. Thank you.